So when it comes to the Dead Island games, I had originally played the first one when it came out. I enjoyed it, but it was one of those games that I played a lot, but sadly never finished. So for this year, I wanted to tackle the first game and finally complete it. Currently, I'm near the end of the game, but at the same time, I kept seeing all the positive word of mouth that Dead Island 2 was receiving. So I figured it might be time for a quick detour to try out the sequel and see how it measures up, now that I have some current background on the original title. Dead Island 2 makes a really good first impression. This game is simply fun, and just the type of thing I'm always happy to encounter. So let's chat about Dead Island 2. Introductions and your first few hours with a game are very important. This is where many players will decide if they continue or drop the game. In some cases, they are playing a trial and this will determine if they make the purchase. So while games really need to make sure to have an enjoyable, complete game, that opening and hook needs to be good. There's too much competition out there from big AAA games, mountains of indies being released on a weekly basis, and then even going back to old favorites. So how does Dead Island 2 stack up when it comes to this? Honestly, it's pretty good. Something I really liked was the initial cutscene you see when you boot up the game. The mix of the visuals and especially the choice of music grabs the player from the presentation standpoint and gets us all more interested in what we are about to play. It builds excitement with good execution. It's funny, I was already enjoying Dead Island 2 and I hadn't even actually played it yet. So upon starting it, we get a higher energy cutscene introducing each of the character options, who are essentially different character classes that you can pick after this. It's snappy, fun, and to the point, no fluff. This is all done fairly quickly to get the player into the action. So thankfully I was happy it wasn't slow or long-winded until you actually get to play the game. And then some games like to hit you with that tutorial that treats the player like an idiot, as they explain how a first-person game is played. A quick, brisk tutorial is good, or a creative one, but one that is over long and kills the initial pacing is detrimental to the experience. With Dead Island 2, it's brisk and to the point, down to basics, and then we get to start smashing some zombies. Structure-wise, the beginning two hours is very much a linear experience. You are funneled towards your objective, hacking and slashing. If you're anxious to start up a co-op game, it is good to know that you need to complete the first few missions before you can do this. Thankfully, this stuff is rather short, and it's a fun part of the introduction. You are given these small spaces to do battle with various zombies, as you get accustomed to the melee that is similar to the first with some differences for the sequel. My point with this is if you're looking to tackle the entire game in co-op from the start, just take your time at the start. Don't rush it, there's some good stuff here. Story-wise, you'll even see some old faces return as well. The new characters so far seem decent. I'll need to spend more time with them and see how the game tackles the narrative in this one, to see how it all comes together. Now after those first few missions, you can leave your base and then tackle the story missions, find side quests, explore, or even mess around with all the zombies. Now this is where the game starts to open up. I really like this part because now I could tackle the game at my own pace, slowly searching around for more items and supplies along with endlessly attacking zombies, leveling, and then working on my challenges. So how is the introduction? compared to the first? Is it better or worse, or maybe just different? When it came to the first game, the initial cutscene was pretty good, along with all the charming jank that it had. But one thing that I really liked about the first was that it had a very short initial level, and then it opened right up to the player. Pretty much 30 minutes in, you could explore the entire beach area, do missions, or just go off on your own, exploring the map at your own pace. The second holds us back for a bit as you complete some missions, so I don't think that 2 has a worse or better intro than 1, but rather just different in its execution, but equally as good considering the level of fun this game has. Let's discuss some of the gameplay. Dead Island 2 is a lot of fun right from the start. When it comes to the combat, it feels similar to the first. It's very focused on the first person melee combat, and I have to praise the level of damage a weapon can cause. Like the first game had some really cool damage with bone breaking along with hacking off all manner of limbs and heads, but for Dead Island 2 it feels like they took that from the first and then amped that up to 11. The cuts on the enemy's skin is impressive, along with the ripped clothing, depending on where you hit them. So yes, the impact is really satisfying 
terrifying when you hit someone, and the sound is pretty good as well. Just like in the first, depending on what weapon you are using, it will feel heavier or lighter while you swing. The heavy hits that you can do with any weapon feels very weighty and awesome to land. Enemies also have enjoyable death animations with them flopping around or even flipping into the air. The ragdoll is great. One thing I want to comment on is that sometimes a weapon hit can also feel weightless when hitting an enemy. This doesn't happen all the time, but I did have it happen with a few weapons. It was just an inconsistency I noticed, but overall the hacking and slashing is very fun. <laughs> The kick does make a return to push enemies back, and now there's a dedicated dodge button, where this was part of your jump in the original. Getting the timing down with the dodging is fun as you bob and weave attacks and keep up your hits. My favorite move has to be the drop kick that you can do. You run, and then you kick in the air to cause an enemy to flip and flop over. This is comical and endlessly entertaining. Throwing weapons is back along with crafting and grabbing supplies. Something I really liked early on was once I was able to explore, was some of the problem solving I encountered. I wanted to get into a room, but I didn't have the key. Around the side, I saw that there was a window into the room, so I threw my weapon to break it, and and then attempted to do a running jump to get to the room. Oddly enough, it worked, and then I was able to grab all the stuff inside. I honestly have no idea if this was the way the developers intended me to complete the room, as the game hints to you finding a key to be able to get in there. But the fact that I could try and experiment with this to see if I could do it and then it actually worked was extremely satisfying. I will keep an eye out for more of this stuff as I keep going through the game. Dead Island 2 has been out for a little bit now, and I'm really happy that for a game that was delayed several times and changed developers' hands a few times as well, this turned out so far to be a really fun game. I was very much rooting for this studio. Damn Busters is a bit of an underdog in my eyes. They made Homefront the Revolution, and while it released in a rough state, a few months later it had stable performance and quality DLC expansions. It was essentially like an urban Far Cry, and I found it to be much better than the first game, especially from the single player. Plus it had a really fun co-op mode that they released free to play with no buzz around it. So with them being handed Dead Island 2, I was hoping that this was going to be their time to shine, especially since there's a lot of talent at the studio. There's some former Time Splitters developers on the team, and you can tell that they still care about the series, as they even put Time Splitters levels in Homefront the Revolution, which was a really cool secret to find. Apparently there are some nods in Dead Island 2 as well. While still beating the first and now taking some time to try the sequel, the sequel is really fun and I'm happy that it feels way less genuine than the first game, and I really enjoy the first game too. It's also nice to see Dead Island 2 seems to be selling well, so hopefully that means more Dead Island games, and Damn Busters making more games too. Have you played Dead Island 2? If you have, let me know what your thoughts are down below. If you're interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you'd like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.